Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And today we have a very special Jack Daniels on the cask. It's a Jack Daniels single barrel barrel strength. That means it's a whiskey with yeah, a lot of ABVs. And that means we have a really, really strong whiskey. Does it say something? 46.5% ABV, but I think it's not quite barrel strength. If you have barrel strength, you have variations. Maybe they, oh, single barrel barrel strength, you have variations. So I think they might adjust it a little bit, but it's pretty much at barrel strength. Or maybe Jack Daniels has their processes down to the last bit of their warehouses and they do know when they reach 46, 64.5% uh, ABV and they can actually adjust the ABVs during the maturation process. If you're in the very, very top of the warehouse, the ABV rises. If you're very bottom, the ABV uh, gets lower. So they could actually move around the casks and select only the casks that have 46.5% ABV. Maybe. So it is technically possible. I don't want to uh, throw them under the bus. But um, I would suggest that probably they do a bit of diluting with water. So, and they say it is straight from the cask, which is an awesome thing. But when you hear straight from the cask, it's not that you put the bottle under the cask and, it's in, uh, and then it gets into the bottle. Because if you look at the bottle, let's, let's just open it. You see that the... The spirit is is clear and there are no flakes inside uh, and that means uh, you at least had it put through a sieve uh, sieve sieve yeah like a, like a little rake to get the flakes of charcoal out that you have inside the cask because the casks are burned out and then you have charcoal on the inside and that's actually what makes the the whiskey really smooth so mm, it's nice but it has an awesome color it's just very very nice and it's not colored because the americans use fresh bourbon oak and uh, not fresh fresh oak casks virgin oak casks that have never been used before well actually on the on the top here it says the the barrel number and the bottling date hmm. oh got a pretty fresh one i think that only had a one month delay and it even stayed I think one or two weeks uh, at my desk so Americans are quick yeah okay so um, about a bit of a recent news I want to talk a bit about Tennessee whiskey we do all know the Tennessee whiskey laws with uh, fresh wood made in Tennessee 51% uh, corn at least and there are a few other things that I can't remember right now but um, Tennessee whiskey is actually um, recognized by foreign countries as well, not just the United States. I could probably in Germany make a Tennessee whiskey and um, wouldn't be able to sell it in the United States, but I'm also not allowed to sell them in Canada and Mexico because it is a trademark recognized under the NAFTA agreement. And that means that Canada uh, doesn't allow anybody to produce uh, or Mexico to produce a Tennessee whiskey except people in the state of Tennessee and they actually say it's a bourbon style whiskey which <laughs> probably the guys from Tennessee don't like to hear because Tennessee whiskey is not a bourbon it's very similar but it's not a bourbon you have that Lincoln County process yes so um, with that whole NAFTA situation being in critical condition right now so maybe the, the Canadians would be able to produce a Tennessee whiskey and not sell them in the US but nobody wants to Tennessee whiskey comes from Tennessee so yeah, that's a bit of a uh, critical situation right on uh, right now going on in the United States or North America um, but I also got a bit dug a bit deeper into the background of of the American whiskey. Why is American whiskey made in column stills? And I did this during research about something else, but I found out that in 1962 um, you got a new tax inside the United States because Abraham Lincoln needed to finance the war, the war, the Civil War. 
um, and they taxed uh, yeah, the distilled spirits. And that was a bit of a problem for the small distilleries and many of them closed. So you had the big purge around, uh, what was it, 1918 with the prohibition. A lot of them went bankrupt. After that, most of them, or not most of them, a lot of them did reopen. But then in the Civil War, they had really trouble in Tennessee and uh, in Kentucky. And then they came, uh, got hit when they lost the war. They got hit with the taxes as well. And that meant that most of them went bankrupt. And only the big ones with the big column stills did survive. So the situation for the American whiskey was pretty rough. And now after and now it, it became culture to have these big whiskey names. And now in the but more recent years, we see a revival of the smaller whiskey distilleries and we see more and more whiskey growing. So it's becoming a bit more diverse, but we still do like the big brands as well. Yeah, so a lot of talk about Tennessee whiskey taxes and, and stuff. So let's try it. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a big cork stump. But it's the, the bottle looks really cool. It's, it's well wrapped, really hard to open. And the thing is where, where it's supposed to break, it never does. Oh, I love that. That is an awesome, awesome stopper. And it's actually an awesome shape for a bottle with that gold label at the front. I really do like the the design at Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels design is really awesome. And that's probably that's probably a lot has a lot to do with the success of, of Jack Daniels. This is an awesome colored whiskey. I really like it. That is some color in whiskey and that on, you only get that with fresh casks. You'd need 40 years with with a scotch to to get that color. Oh, and it's intense. It's really intense. It's a bit sharp though. Yeah, it's uh, intense caramel, sweetness, vanilla, but you do feel that it's 64.5% uh, 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 ABV. And that is uh, on, nearly on the 30 proof I think 129 proof but you you do realize that and it's oh, it's already a bit spicy as well a little bit of pepperness pepper going on but it's incredibly incredibly sweet with a lot of caramel but you can't put your nose in too deep because it's a you do realize there's a bit, bit much alcohol going on. If you if you stick it in too um, too far and you smell too much, you get burned by the alcohol. Hmm. 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 Oh my God. This is intense. Oh, there's so much sweetness going on. Mm, I have to say, even for, for me who likes a good barrel strength or a good cask strength whiskey, this is a bit tough. 64.5% ABV. You do realize it's, it's rough on your tongue. So definitely not something for a beginner. Uh, it's, ah. Oh, it's intense. It has that big caramel vanilla going on and that hint of smokiness, a little hint of smokiness, but it's one of these barbecue smokiness. Yeah, like, like you know, from, from spare ribs. Spare ribs are not really that smoky if you don't put them in a smoker, if you do them like kitchen style or something like that. Um, you got that hint of smokiness and that's in there as well. But yeah, nah, spare ribs are more smoky than this one. It's about half the smokiness or less, yeah, something like that. Mmm. 
Mm. 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 Wow, I do like it. Mm. So, but it's the, the the cool thing behind that is you can put your Jack Daniels with a bit of water. You can put it down to whatever strength you really feel like. Because 64.5 percent, yeah, 64.5 percent, yes, is more than enough. Is more than enough. So I would recommend it. Maybe at 55, 50, something like that. Mm. Oh, mm, that is awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to know more about Jack Daniels, go on whiskey.com and find the Jack Daniels site. And we have a lot of stories about Jack Daniels there and also a tour around the distillery in video form. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time.